something in the sky that alarmed me significantly, that sent me on a little rabbi trail, okay? And this rabbi trail took me to a place that I really didn't want to go. So I'm going to give you a close-up of this picture here. This is the, the moon and the star, as you can see here, okay, that I'm talking about that shows up again on uh, East Star's chariot. But what I want to focus on is this. There's a close-up, ladies and gentlemen, and what does that look like? The Statue of Liberty. So I'm going to take a little bit of a rabbit trail for a second and get uncomfortable. And we're going to find out who Lady Liberty really is. So we're going to go back to the French sculptor, Frédéric Augustus Bartholdi. In 1834 to 1904, went to Egypt in 1868 for inspiration. The construction of the Statue of Liberty began in 1878. So let me talk about this for just a second. How many of you were told in school that the French donated the Statue of Liberty to the United States of America? Okay. How many know that is absolutely not the truth whatsoever? Okay. Whatever they tell you, just forget about it, right? It just totally backs what you were thinking in high school, which is, why am I here anyway, right? <laughs> you find out years later, you were right. <laughs> but what I want to talk about here is this. The Statue of Liberty, when Bartholdi was pitching this, he was a sculptor, okay? And as a sculptor, he was trying to build something great that had never been done before. And so he went to Egypt to be inspired because he knew that in Egypt, everything was huge, okay? Everything was big, from the pyramids uh, to all the different statues, everything was super life-size. And he wanted to get that inspiration. Keep that in mind. Then what he did was he went around the world pitching the Statue of Liberty. We were not the first place that he went to. He was a salesman and a sculptor at the same time. And what happened was, is they went uh, to America, America liked the idea, and tried to raise funds for the Statue of Liberty, but they couldn't. They were having a very difficult time raising the funds for the Statue of Liberty until one gentleman in a local paper, excuse me, decided to write a, a blog, what we would call a blog today, or a newspaper article, basically ripping on the middle class saying, hey, the rich cannot be the only ones that represent America. We need to give to this cause because we need a representation of freedom. And wouldn't you believe it, lo and behold, they raised the funds and they began the process of bringing the Statue of Liberty over to America and assembling it on American soil. Now what's fascinating is if you look at the picture that's on your screen right now, just I'm sure it's total coincidence, ladies and gentlemen, that the statue on the left not only looks identical to the Statue of Liberty, but has the exact same rays coming off what is arraying her head as the sun rays, representing the seven continents of the world. It is the sun god that presides over the world. Oh, I'm not done yet. <laughs> this is Addis. Now, Addis is somebody you need to understand who he is because Addis was the priest or the main servant of Kybele or Ishtar or the wife of Baal, the sun god. And he, in their craziness, let's just leave it that wink, wink, of what went happened in those uh, times, is he castrated himself, then would dress up, cross-dress as a woman, and wear this hat. This is a close-up of the castrated Addis on the left and Lady Liberty on the right. What I want to suggest to you when I got to this part is I thought to myself, oh my goodness, is Lady Liberty really a lady? Or is it Larry Liberty? <laughs> I don't know. But I'm going to let you decide as we do a little bit close up here and you tell me if that looks like a feminine face. 
Ignore the long hair. Remember, the priests of Ishtar wore long hair, they castrated themselves, wore robes like women, and wore these headdresses. Now, one more better for you. Here is her face before it is assembled and before you have the ability to look at the hair and be influenced. That's under construction. If I'd known any better, I would have think it was Superman. <laughs> so you can be the judge, ladies and gentlemen, but this little rabbit trail here, I believe, shows us that not only has Addis or the priest of Ishtar and sun god worship showing up all over Egypt, all over Rome, all over Greece and everywhere else in the, in the eastern Mediterranean, but is on our soils and has infiltrated America today and has literally become the epitome and the torch of freedom, it's bondage. Let's go one further. The seven rays of the sun. Notice the nimbus, the halo of rays of the sun. This is an ancient pagan sun god. It's everywhere. This is not something they just made up. Helios, look at this. Holding a torch. He's the Colossus of Rhodes, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Where did he get the idea of the torch? Ladies and gentlemen, he took a trip here. He took a trip to, to Egypt. He studied these things. This is what he saw. An over a hundred foot colossus of Helios with this headpiece on of the seven rays of the sun. Don't tell me that that didn't influence him. The exact attributes of Helios or the colossus and the sun god and all of those things show up in the Statue of Liberty. 